some have said this is the most controversial Grey's Anatomy episode. I think it's time for me to chime in. Let's get started. Be whoop. I know Denny's cardiac parameters. I know how his LVAD works better than any other intern. I also know his meds better. I know the frequency, the dosage, the quantity, and his physical limitations. That's actually a really important factor in the success of any medical treatment. If your medical team is well-versed on your chart, the chance of a mistake occurring drops down significantly. And by the way, patients need to take some initiative here on their own to know what medications they're taking to be interested, ask questions, advocate for themselves, if not themselves, their family members advocate for them. Because I can't even begin to say how many of my patients come in taking 10 different medications, not knowing what they're for, what their dosages are, and that's a mistake waiting to happen. I have some news for you. Oh, this is our guy from Walking Dead, and um, he looks like Louis Espina from the channel, by the way, does he not? Oh, he was in Magic City, one of my favorite canceled TV shows. You're getting a heart, Denny. I don't mean to be dramatic and all, but I'm gonna need you to repeat that. He looks and sounds exactly like a spina, it's crazy. What's the weirdest reaction you, you had from a patient in doing a prostate exam? I've had strange sounds. I had one guy almost break my finger off. Mm -mm. You are getting the heart. I'll give you my heart too. <laughs> What the hell happened to my donor? He went into VFib. I can oh, see Oh, no. Give me the pallets. Grab, take over compressions. Okay, please. Please don't shock the flatline patient. He's asystolic. I don't get it. He's asystolic because his heart is no longer having any electrical activity, and you trying to restart his heart by shocking is not how it works. You give the epinephrine. If not, it fails, it fails. Just because your donor's heart died doesn't mean I have to give you mine. Is your patient higher on the transplant list? I have no idea. The way that they decide is based on proximity, matching, obviously, and matching includes HLA typing, blood typing, cross typing. And then one of the most important things for a heart is actually the size and shape of the recipient's chest cavity. So imagine you have a very small person getting a very big heart. That heart may not be able to beat properly and therefore it's not a good match. As of this morning, Dr. Han's patient was 22 hundredths of a point ahead. That's basically a tie. A point ahead based on whose scoring system. I know like for liver transplants, to put people on a list, there's actually scores that we use called MELD scores. I forgot what the other one is called. For a heart transplant, I wasn't even aware that there was a score. And there were two donors, Izzy. Our guy's heart flatlined and now he's trying to get the other guy. But there's a list. Yes, then the higher guy gets the heart. Denny's getting worse by the second. His stats are now in the 70s and dropping. Izzy, I'm not gonna lie for you. I understand advocating for ones you care about, but you can't lie. This is like the equivalent of killing someone else. Did you put him on a nitro drip? Um, yes. Yes, of course. Kristen, she could be putting paddles directly on his heart. He's still not getting this thing. The amount of animosity in this hospital is bewildering to me. The fact that one doctor is like, I don't care if you're a patient on the death, but you ain't getting my heart. And then the other person is just making Be it up and acting like their patient's dying when they're absolutely not. What is happening? Dr. Han. What? If Dr. Berg wants to run labs, do an echo and a BNP to fully ascertain the status of his patient, we'll allow it. That'll take an hour. That's gonna take longer than an hour, by the way, especially in most busy hospital systems. Getting an echo means getting a tech, then getting a cardiologist to read it. Like, that's just not gonna happen stat. He'll get the next heart is. No, he needs to get this heart. He'll probably get a heart at some point, but as long as Danny's doing well on the LVAD and there's someone ahead of him on the transplant list, he's not gonna get this heart. They're almost saying it as if like, oh, honey, we have to follow the rules. No, 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 this is the right thing to do, rules or not. The person who is in active danger deserves the heart, not the person you want to go on the date deserves the heart. You're right, okay, thank you. If she starts poisoning him, I'm gonna lose my mind. In order for you to get the heart, you would have to get worse, much worse, and you would have to do it very quickly. Well, I don't see that happening. You see that happening? I am gonna make it happen. I had Grey's Anatomy on my list. I don't remember where it was, but I just demoted it. I retroactively, I'm gonna go back into that video and demote Grey's Anatomy after seeing like this. Catherine Heigl deserves to be like the evil version of House MD that doesn't try and secretly make their patients better by being unethical, but just secretly wants to kill her patients by being unethical. Don't worry, you're not gonna die. I will be here the whole time. Oh my God! Make sure of that, and this that's what this stuff is for. This I didn't expect this. All right, this is wrong. You've waited a year and a half to get this thing. Who knows when the next one is gonna come along. Is this how she gets kicked off the show? Please? Okay, I can't do this if you don't. Please, please, please. If you don't do this, please. 
Okay, I'll do it. You know, like when you, a conversation goes too far and you have to like walk it back. I'm gonna walk this back. You have two patients that need a heart. There's only one heart available. One patient is actually sick, but the other patient who's okay and stable waiting for a heart is in love. And because they're in love and their manipulative doctor girlfriend or person, whoever they are in this relationship, wants the heart so bad that they're actually gonna screw over the person who's dying in order to get the heart and lobby for the heart to come to their lover. Holy sh Hey, after I do this, I might have to shock you a few times. Do what, Izzy? Um, I feel like we should say stop. Don't any of you wanna say stop? A person is actively about to be murdered and this other resident, George, has no qualms about this? Unplug it! Why are you cutting it? You cannot reconnect the cut. She's not even a good lawbreaker, man. All I have to do is confirm that his condition is worse, and then Burke can call Yunos, and he'll move up on the list, and he will get his heart. She's Shoot. gone insane, right? It's not just me? He's been shot. What? <laughs> <sighs> this is a comedy. This is... I don't know if the writers deserve a raise or someone should take away their Adderall because this is a problem. This is bad. This is bad and serious and against a lot of rules. It's not fun for me. I don't wanna play. What if you remain? Well, I wouldn't have fallen in love with a patient. You fell in love with an attendant. What's so to bear? What's the point? The point is we can't help who we fall in love with. Okay, I think this is a point that I have to say. This doesn't happen in hospitals. This is the equivalent of saying that like, that crazy story that happened on Netflix with the murdering nurse, that happens everywhere. No, 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 it doesn't happen everywhere. How's his heart looking? His left ventricle shot and he's barely pushing blood out. When a heart starts having a very low ejection fraction, that puts you into a risk uh, for developing arrhythmias in the heart, potentially fatal ones, because then you're not able to adequately supply the heart with the blood that it needs to function and keep beating. Because remember, the heart's job is not just to pump blood to the body, but also to itself. And actually in patients who fall below a certain ejection fraction threshold, they actually get something known as an implantable defibrillator that if their heart starts failing so bad that it stops or goes into an abnormal rhythm, it actually shocks them back. I love him. You don't even know him. I do know him. No. You've never even seen him outside the four walls of this hospital. You don't know him. I know him. Do you know who should be most afraid of her? The dude. Because if she's willing to kill you for love, do you know what she's gonna do if you try and break up with her? There's possibility here. And, and given the choice of running or staying, you should run. A sane person, a person who values her career and everything she's worked for. How about the other person's heart? How about humanity? A sane person. Marry me. He's hypoxic. He doesn't know what he's saying. He said marry me, right? He did. Danny, wake up. Danny. Wake up. Stop dying and tell me you want to marry me. Ah! He's flatlined. No, no, no. He's not flatlined. There's movement in his heart. Okay, um, okay, uh, let's shock him. Uh, charge the fibrillator. Like they don't even know what rhythm is it. Is it shockable? Is it not shockable? But let's shock him. You need that medicine. What medicine? I'll know it when I see it. I, I think the one that stops the heart. Uh, Atropine? Uh, I'll put us keep my heart beating. No, no, no. It, it only stops your heart for six seconds. Adenosine, adenosine, sorry. Adenosine is a medication that we use to break supraventricular tachycardia, which is the SVT that they just mentioned. And basically it's a pretty scary medication to give because when you give it, it actually completely stops the heart and allows the heart to restart. And sometimes it could break it. There's also some unique things that we do to try and trigger a breaking of an SVT, like dunking a patient's head in cold water. Like I'm not even joking. Or having them try and bear down and do Valsalva maneuvers. Kind of interesting. It's okay. It just feels like- I'm gonna die. You're not gonna die, I promise. That feeling of impending doom does happen with adenosine. Yes, he flatlines for a few seconds and then it should come back. You fools better have a good explanation for this. People in medical school and residency would throw you under the bus because you came four minutes late to lecture. <laughs> Here, their residents are so tight knit that they'll help prevent a murder to help out a romance in the hospital. He's gonna get the heart, right? You're gonna sign the charts and talk to the transplant coordinator. In the labs. I'm gonna guess that his BNP is significantly elevated. On his echo, he has a worsening ejection fraction. And if they did a chest x-ray, they're gonna see significant pulmonary edema. 
See, his BUN and creatinine are increasing. Okay, BUN creatinine because his kidneys are failing. He clearly has pulmonary edema. He deserves to move up to 1A status on the transplant list. Okay, by the way, BUN creatinine is not what decides pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is decided by a chest x-ray, so this is complete horse poop. Oh, and by the way, I keep saying BNP, but I'm not defining it. BNP is brain natriuretic peptide, but it's a marker that is released uh, when there is significant strain on the heart. And a lot of times it is reflective of when a heart is failing, signaling that there's worsening of congestive heart failure. Look at that thing. Yeah, left ventricle is excessively dilated. When we talk about congestive heart failure, a lot of times we talk about an enlarged left ventricle. The left ventricle is the part of the heart that actually sends blood to the rest of the body. So when that part of the heart can get actually too big, it hypertrophies, it doesn't fill and relax as well in order to fill with blood and then send blood to the rest of the body, including the heart. So there's two types of dysfunctions when it comes to heart failure. Systolic heart failure, when the heart can't pump as well, and then diastolic heart failure, where the heart can't relax as well. Both are big problems slightly for different reasons, but the treatments medication-wise change depending on whether it's systolic or diastolic heart failure. You look, <laughs> God, you look amazing. Is it bad that I secretly want him to break up with her right now? <laughs> and then she goes into cardiac arrest from stress-induced cardiomyopathy like Takusobo, and then he has to do CPR while the, res of the rescue people arrive? That would be really funny. He's flatlining, why is no one being notified of this? Why is it the monitoring alerting anybody? If he just had a heart transplant, he's in the cardiac care unit, at the very least he's hooked up to telemetry and someone is being notified of that. I think it was a stroke. He was prone to blood clots. A clot could have formed on his sutures, traveled to his brain, it only takes a second. It could have been a lot of other things, but you know, guessing in a moment like this is really appropriate because Clearly you have zero medical ethics. Speaking of scams, here are some TikTok scams of when they're trying to get you to purchase products that are absolute BS. Click here to check that out and as always stay happy and healthy and don't become a criminal and cut people's LVAD wires.